Hey guys, Martin here from Mattress Clarity. Do you find it's easier to go to bed after a nightcap? Is it easier for you to fall asleep after a night on the town? Well, you're not alone. According to the National Sleep Foundation, 20% of Americans use alcohol to fall asleep. Now, while it may seem like it's easier to fall asleep with alcohol if you're sleeping more deeply, this is really not the case. Alcohol actually has some very negative effects on your sleep, and I wanna talk about just that today. I wanna to talk about how alcohol affects your sleep at night, how it affects your next day, how it affects your health overall, and if you are gonna drink alcohol, the ways to limit your drinking to get the best sleep possible. Let's get started. So right off the bat, I wanna say that I am not a doctor. And if you struggle with sleep issues or alcohol related issues, I do recommend seeing a medical professional. That being said, I do wanna talk about the positive side of alcohol when it comes to sleep. And namely, alcohol can make it easier to fall asleep more quickly. So I personally like a nightcap sometimes on the weekends or during the week. One glass of whiskey helps me fall asleep much more quickly. And also there are some positives to the first half of your sleep that night. And so you're in nice deep sleep that actually extends deep sleep, but as the night goes on, you're in more of that deep sleep and not in that REM sleep. Now, I talk about this in another video we did on sleep cycles. If you want more information about that, I definitely recommend checking out that video. But I just wanna give you information right now about these sleep stages. So you have four sleep stages. You have stage one, two, three, and then REM sleep, rapid eye movement. Now, during REM sleep, that is that deep restorative sleep. And that's gonna be when your memories are consolidated, you're actually having your immune system strengthened. It is a very important stage of sleep. And when you're drinking alcohol, it actually shortens your REM sleep. So you're getting less less of that restorative sleep. It is also negatively affecting your circadian rhythms, your body clock. And one of the main parts of sleep is going to be melatonin production. And melatonin is a hormone that helps regulate sleep, helps you stay asleep throughout the entire night. And when you drink alcohol, it actually cuts down on your melatonin production. Did you know that alcohol has a similar effect on your body as a fever? And that it makes your body temperature rise and fall very quickly. And when that happens, it's more common that you deal with nightmares and vivid dreaming. Now, alcohol is also a diuretic, similar to coffee. And basically that means you're gonna get up more often during the middle of the night to go to the bathroom, and that's definitely disrupting your sleep. Now, you might also have breathing issues. Namely, when you drink alcohol, it can relax the back throat muscles. When that happens, you might snore more often. You might also choke in your sleep. And that's similar to what you're gonna have with sleep apnea. So I struggle with sleep apnea, and basically what happens there is my back throat muscles, again, they relax. I'm not getting enough oxygen. I'm choking in my sleep. I'm actually waking up often throughout the night, many, many times throughout the night, and I'm not getting deep, restful sleep. So now let's talk about the day after. So you drank alcohol the day before or the night before, how does it affecting the next day? Well, first off, as I said, a lot of times when you're drinking alcohol, you're negatively affecting your REM sleep. And during REM sleep, you're consolidating memories, you're resting your brain. And when you're not getting that proper amount of sleep, the next day you might be more foggy with your brain, you might be more forgetful, might make more accidents at work. Also driving, if you're not getting the proper amount of sleep, they've done studies that those who sleep less than seven hours per night are much more likely to get an auto accident the next day. You also increase your chances of dealing with depression. You might be more irritable. You might be more anxious. These are all things that go along with insomnia and lack of sleep. And then of course we have the dreaded hangover. Now, most of us know what a hangover feels like, but some of the common symptoms are headache, nausea, fatigue. And that fatigue is really important because it can actually negatively affect your sleep the next night. When you have a hangover, it's much more likely you need to take a nap. And when you do that, especially too late in the day, it can make it much more difficult to fall asleep and stay asleep the next night. And there are some other ways that alcohol can affect your body, namely alcohol dependence or alcoholism. And I've had a few friends who've dealt with this condition. It is very, very serious, but it can also negatively impact your sleep in a few ways. Namely, it's harder to fall asleep, it's harder to stay asleep, and in general, you just have a lower quality of sleep. Now also, if you're trying to give up alcohol, you're going through withdrawal symptoms, that can lead to anxiety, nightmares, or also insomnia. Alcohol can also negatively impact your heart, your liver, increase your chances of getting certain types of cancer, and weaken your immune system in a very serious way. 
Now, if you are going to drink, there are a few things to keep in mind. Now, the general rule of thumb for most physicians is one drink per day for women and two drinks per day for men. Now, it is going to depend on your size, your weight, and your age, so definitely keep that in mind. And if you are going to drink, stop drinking two to three hours before you go to bed. It gives your body enough time to process the alcohol that you've actually imbibed. So again, it's all about moderation and timing. In the end, you can see alcohol affects your sleep in a number of ways. And if you are going to drink, it's all about moderation. But if you or a family member does struggle with alcoholism, there are many resources out there for you. We have a few listed in our written article. But that's about it. We're just getting started looking at sleep research. Definitely check out mattressclary.com. We also do a lot of videos just like this. So hit the like button and subscribe.